can you give me a sense of how things are going, what you're seeing in terms of your customer base and their reaction to soaring costs elsewhere? Yeah, I think what we're seeing um, with with uh, the casino customers at uh, at our three properties, um, we're, we're definitely seeing the squeeze. I mean, it's it's something I think that uh, you know when we talked back a couple months ago, we started feeling it, uh, but it's just really accelerated. Um, the I think maybe there may be an element where um, if you're on the West Coast, you might have felt it a little bit quicker because gas prices uh, in California and Southern Nevada and Arizona were a little bit higher. They kind of led the, the the gas price increases throughout the country, and and uh, you could immediately see it in in the discretionary consumer spend. I think we're seeing it now with some of the uh, some of the bigger numbers that are coming out, but we've been feeling it now for a, for a good ten weeks. Is it is the impact being felt in some areas of your operations rather than others? Oh, definitely. Um, you know, the, the areas that we're seeing it the most is on, on the gaming side and on the beverage side. That That's where we've seen the slowdown uh, be both um, uh, the biggest the per- biggest percentage uh, decreases um, and uh, for the longest duration. I think um, there's been a little bit of lag on some other areas. Hotel demand has stayed strong just because I think there's been so much pent up uh, demand for hotels and, and you're seeing great strength in hotels throughout the country. And certainly you are in Vegas on the hotel side, but it's the, it's the extra discretionary income that we've seen uh, kind of squeezed out of the consumer. Have you lowered your hotel rates to keep the booking strong? No, we haven't really done that because um, hotel, as I was saying, the hotel has been good, but it's the, it's the extra discretionary income. Um, it's the, uh, you know, it's somebody that goes to the ATM and takes out that extra hundred dollars that that's just not there. They're not spending on, uh, on beverage or on the gaming side. And, and just recently we've seen this started to impact, um, the restaurant, uh, the restaurant components of our business. I'm curious because what we heard in the earnings calls from, you know, in, in, in mid April and then in May was that there was some admission that inflation was a affecting the very lowest demographic of customers. So those that you're not making a lot of money on anyway, would you agree that that's where you're seeing it or has that started to uh, to spread to other demographics? Oh, no, I think the squeeze that we've seen due to inflation is affecting a a much broader range than maybe just the last minute customer uh, with a cheap hotel room. Um, This is far more widespread. I mean, households are households um, with six figure six figure household income incomes are are definitely getting squeezed. I mean, they're losing that discretionary spending because of the necessities of uh, of, of transportation costs and and um, food and housing. Let me ask you oh, one of the things that, for instance, Circa is really known for is that daytime pool party atmosphere and cabanas and and all of the amenities that go along with that in april you said it was just already going gangbusters now we're entering the height of pool season in las vegas what's demand like for for the upgraded amenities you know the upgraded amenities have been uh, ha- have stayed solid but uh, but you could feel it with all the you know the all the little extra drink or the extra the extra spend it's just it's just not there and you know that's one of the things that I've thought to be a little bit um, maybe underreported because um, it's definitely I- impacting uh, impacting every household and then from a business perspective we're seeing it I mean if you I mean we're privately held so so I'm, I'm not reporting earnings but I do think that when when you have companies that are going to report the second quarter i think there's going to be a few surprises to the downside um you know i i would also think that you know companies that maybe pre-announce i i think that if you have a high uh percentage of your revenue that's depending upon that discretionary consumer spend um i think there's going to be some, some surprises out there given how much the casino shares are under pressure anyway i mean quarter to day you've got uh, Caesars down almost 50%. You have uh, Wynn and Penn and, and Boyd. I mean, basically, all of your Las Vegas competitors and, and your U.S. domestic competitors are seeing their shares intensely pressured um, by this. Do you think that the inflationary pressure is already priced in 
by casino investors, or do you think that there's more downside to come? Well, I definitely think that that um, you know when you take a look at some of the casino casino and hospitality companies. I mean, their shares have been under pressure since the beginning of the year. So I think there was, um, you know, some some foreshadowing to what's taken place. But but I think maybe what might be underestimated is how severe it is. Um, I would say I would say some of the bigger companies that you mentioned that have quite a bit of hotel room product, um, they're going to hang in there um, the best. Um, companies with a lower quantity of hotel revenue versus other revenue, um, they're getting impacted a little bit more right now. I do think I do think it's not fully priced in at this point in time. Why do you think it is that hotel bookings are hanging on? Well, I think once, you know, the pandemic, um, you know, some of the closures ended back, you know, effectively almost two years ago, there was so much pent up demand. And the initial pent up demand came from um, customers that were relatively close in, in a geography perspective. And then as different States opened up, there was great pent up demand in 20 that, that was fulfilled in 2021 when everyone had a lot of free money. So there was the combination of pent up demand with a lot of free money. Um, and I think from a hotel side, what we're still seeing is some pent up demand that's being fulfilled from international travelers. Um, we've had, we've had tremendous, um, growth of, of, of Mexican, of Canadian, of European uh, customers from the UK that haven't been able to get to Las Vegas and to some of the tourist destinations. And I think that's what's created um, a little bit of uh, a strength from the hotel side, uh, but it's just not showing up on, uh, on on a blackjack table or in a slot machine or at the bar. And are you are you seeing forward bookings declining at all? I mean, I, I know that you're saying like occupancy remains strong and all of that, but is your forward bookings declining? Um, our forward bookings are uh, fair. They're okay. Um, they're not robust in any way. Um, it's just it's just that last minute spend. Um, it's the trip of uh, uh, that comes up with a group of people say, "Hey, let's go to Vegas this weekend," or let's. That's what's missing. And for the people that had their trips booked, um, that may have planned on going to a steakhouse for dinner, maybe they're looking at an alternative. It's that that's kind of what's missing in action. Got it. Got it. Is there anything else you want me to tell my viewers on CNBC about the gaming situation? I mean, the strongest April ever, the second highest grossing month after March. It's it's really hard to hear you talking about this coming off the heels of a month like that. Yeah, I mean, the, from a gaming perspective, the the March numbers, April numbers. I mean, it's it was so it was it's been so great, but it's something that's you you could feel it. It's definitely it's definitely um, weakening, you know, you could, you could feel the foundation kind of going away. And that's kind of why I don't think it's uh, fully priced into the markets at, at this point in time. Derek, thank you. I really appreciate it. Thanks.